Last week we said we were going to do something, and we're finally sticking to our word. We are actually ranking these motherfucking movies. <laughs> Welcome to Time Sweeps. Yay. <laughs> back so as you can see here we are ranking the movies we're ranking these dang old marvel movies you know what i'm saying boys yep. for 15 years we got movies we have so many movies and shows to talk about we're the netflix th- shows are not in this neither is agents of shield neither is an agent carter so either. it's only it's it's just canon of official stuff. projects even though agent carter is, agent, agent yeah. carter official is mcu canon now Big screen, silver screen, so silver screen, yeah, silver screen and streaming, yeah, <laughs> streaming screen, uh, yeah. like Disney Plus streaming, not Netflix. Oh, streaming. I f- yeah, Netflix is still a stream service. All right, so Disney, where do we want to start? Uh, we're probably start we're gonna, at gonna the should we just go in release order? Huh? Yeah, just start from the top and just go down. All right, there's gonna be a trend and it's gonna be really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> All right, Ooh. Iron Man one. Shit, I think it's easily A or B. A. I think it's easily A, and yeah. I feel like if you throw in the nostalgia, which I'm gonna try not to do, it's an S. No, just for the fact of it. Yeah, it it started. It started the the. It kickstarted this. There's like you know what I'm saying. One two three. One two three four five six seven eight. Nine, There's like twenty something. Eleven twelve thirteen fourteen. 14 times three. Do that math in your head. So, 21 times three. Wait. No. no. 15 years worth of media. <laughs> anyway, Iron Man 1. I think it's easily A or B, like Wyatt said. But then nostalgia factor just makes it want to make me want to go S. But I think it's a very, very strong A. I think it's a strong A. It has good direction. It was a big comeback for Robert Downey Jr. But, like, it did something that a lot of superhero movies, when they go to a new character, can't always do. And when I say new character, I mean one that people don't really give a crap about. Right. Not your Supermans. You actually cared about Spider-Mans. Right. No one gave a crap about Iron Man. Mm, He had two whole stories that people cared about. And one of them isn't even Tony Stark. So it's just like, when you made this movie... People actually gave a crap about this character. And it even changed him to people thinking that he's actually like, oh, he's like he's like a charismatic person. No, he's a He's an alcoholic shit. that likes to like just yell at people. He's a dick. Like comic book Iron Man's now completely different because of Robert yeah, Downey Jr. C- yeah. Like Mustache Bros comic stuff. That's like that didn't exist before MCU. No, I think they they had a very clear thought on what they wanted to do and yeah. how they wanted to do it going into this movie. I think it's A tier simply for what it's done for Iron Man as a character. Yeah, it's refreshed. It's kind of like the Guardians, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like the Guardians. Yeah. Um, But yeah, solid A. So, controversial. Incredible Hulk. B. B or I C. was going to put it in B. Yeah. Because everyone shits on this movie. B for Banner. This movie is fire. I always liked this movie. Always. I'm not one of these bandwagoners who are like, hey, look, I went back and watched Hulk 2008, and it's pretty all right. No, this has been the same movie since then, and I've liked it all the the whole time. I've never gotten a Hulk movie that I think actually captures Hulk stuff. Yeah. I'll take it, though. I just, I really like the action. I like the acting in this movie. I know. Until so, Universal gets a grip and sells that. it back to Marvel, this is the only one we're going to get. Holding the Hulk hostage is all Universal has besides making another Fast and Furious movie. I mean, you're not wrong. They can't even make a Great, modern Hulk honestly, monster movie, for God's sake. It's a little spotty at some points. Some points. With the f- CGI. But pretty good CGI for a big green guy. First try with the new, like, with the... Yeah, from 2008 to 2000, or from 2003 to 2008, big 
Big, big step up. Big step up. Honestly? Big step up. But look at even Iron Man, though. 2008, same year. I mean, Great CGI throughout the whole thing. The, the Hulk honestly looks a lot better than some of the stuff in the new ones. I think this Hulk looks better than She-Hulk did. I would agree with that, but they also, I think there's one big thing that helps. Mm-hmm. There was only one major daylight scene. I can remember in 2008. That, that's true. That's, that's a true. big game changer. That's true. That's why true. big CGI monster fights normally happen at night. At night because of the yeah. hide stuff. That's why the big. That's a good point. That's a good scene. point that's to talk about. They knew how to use it to their advantage. I yeah, think that, is a like big piece of that. It's a dark, dark movie. Literally, when it's dark, when it's dark out, it looks easier to believe. Right. But even that one scene, I guess they could have just spent way more time on that daylight scene. Oh, I think than they the did. Nighttime scenes since right? it was a movie. Um, more. A shorter amount of time for less scenes for a bigger impact. That daylight uh, scene, though. 80-20 rule, yeah. That daylight scene is the where the Hulk is revealed to us for the first time. In that movie. Like, we, mm-hmm. we see him yeah. in, like, darkness. And we see him do that uh, thing to, yeah. what's his name? Edward Abom- no, Abomination, no. What's, oh. um, what's the guy's name? <laughs> Dude. Emil Blonsky. Blonsky, yeah. Um, he... But then we get that daylight scene, and that's when we see him for I the first call time. Call him Brit Bong. <laughs> Brit Bong. <laughs> I hate you. But yeah, honestly, but solid B tier movie. When I was talking about time frames, I was talking more like the uh, what do you call it? Like a TV show has it more time. Mm-hmm. There is more hours of She Hulk than there are of Hulk in the Hulk movie. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Yep. More content hours, so yeah, there's yeah. a lot more things being spread out and being. Right. Uh, but even dwindled. This Hulk compared to 2012 Hulk is that's even an even bigger step up. Right. And then even I think I think my favorite Hulk in the whole the whole thing, my favorite Hulk from any movie. Your foot felt like a meatloaf when I kicked it just now. That was terrifying. <laughs> my foot. It was just <laughs> really <laughs> soft, and I was like, eh. my foot is a meatloaf. <laughs> Sorry, I shit on the floor. I shit on the floor um, and put it in a sock. Anyway, Age of anyway. Ultron Hulk is my favorite one. I would agree with that. Out of the whole th- franchise. In terms of like MCU Hulks that we've got. Yeah. Iron Man Dose. I'm thinking C or D for here. Okay. I want to give it C because we have one of the best suit-ups of any Iron Man suit in this movie. The suitcase, the briefcase one. I do like the suitcase. It also yeah. sets up Thor. It sets up everyone. It sets up basically Shield. This is the one where this is Shield's introduced. Captain America's Shield. Nick Fury's in here, or a prototype of Captain America's Um, Shield, and it's just really awkward. They, uh, what you might call it, um, they we get a map in this movie of every of where all their major assets are, and one's in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, we get a lot more. One's in Wakanda, all the way back in 2010, y'all. That's because I think they thought that things were going to be different. Yeah, and it took a while taking a long time but where where do you want it i was thinking c yeah i like it well we're gonna get to that i was gonna say i think c is a good place for it for now at least thor one what are your opinions that's hard i think (laughs) i honestly think the the opening scene where they go fight the frost giants that's a cool scene is one of the best thor scenes we have Period. Especially. And then you get the rest of the movie yes. where Thor isn't doing th- Thor Thor things. For like the f- like the middle chunk. The meat and cheese of your sandwich. He is you, not Thor. He's just right. flirting with Natalie Portman. <laughs> it I, I think it's D. You think, I think it's a D movie? I think it's right. a D movie. I think Thor the Dark World was a better Thor movie. Really? Yes. In terms of Thor. It's boring because it's Thor. But Thor two actually managed to be a movie That's some about feathers, Thor man. doing Thor things, and then Thor one is like, "I'm powerless and I am human. What do I do?" Yeah, but keep, this is how you drink that, tea. That, keep in mind, that Thor of the Dark cool. World is the first time where we. S- uh, no, I never mind. I was about to say I think something it's really dumb. Piss poor character. It's where we get some actual lore about Infinity Stones. Which one? Thor of the Dark World. Mm-hmm. It's the first time we see one other than the Tesseract. Yes. And Loki's staff later revealed. Yeah, right. We didn't know. Right. The, the, it was they didn't either. Right. But Thor 1, you're putting that D. I think it's a D movie. There's parts of it that are good, but it's but also why? It's really hard to watch. It's the first time Loki dies. Yeah, the, the first time. <laughs> when I'm expecting it to be a joke. Um, okay, Captain America 1. 
I think it's a B movie. I was going to say A. This is honestly... I think the effects could have been better at certain points. There's a lot of practicality, but there's also a lot of awkwardness in terms of effects, I think. Like what? Stuff feels janky to me. Like physical propped objects. Like they were like, how do we make this look like it's from the 40s? And they were like, I don't know. Slap this together and shove it out there. Like certain about the areas and scenes that like it looks like a Captain America comic. But something feels off. Hmm. I like the story. I like all the acting that happens in it. Except for Dum Dum Dugan. And then there's just like Dum Dum Dugan. That's yeah, his character name. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a corporal. I don't remember. But I feel like it could have easily been better. Personally, just because of how much I like Captain America, that is my favorite Captain America movie, and I would call it S just because of how much I love watching it and that's listening why I, to the soundtrack. That's why I have it one at A because that's my favorite Captain America movie. But I think if I'm going to be critical of it, it's really only a B movie and this tier list system. I don't think it did as much as inventive stuff as Iron Man did, but I love that movie a whole lot more than I could ever love Iron Man as a character. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> I mean... What do you want, Connor? I, A or B, man. Well, you got to make the decision. Yeah, I'm willing for it to be on A, but I think I could be critical enough of it, of it enough to put it lower. I'm gonna say B because it's not okay. as renowned as the other two, which is sad. I think it's the it's the it's the most underrated Captain America movie. I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. out of the three, I mean, but still. Oh, hey, but the reason I don't it, like Winter I was going to say, we're about we're gonna, to, get to we're gonna talk to Winter feathers Soldier later. Man. Yeah, we're, I'm going to ruffle some feathers with Winter Soldier. I have Soldier. a lot of feathers to ruffle on that movie. You don't like Winter Soldier? It's not that I don't like it. I'll get to it. We'll, we'll get, get to, to it. it when we're there. Avengers 1. Honestly, a. S. S. For me. I think it's A. A? I think there's better movies, team up movies, that the well, MCU has done. But, th- but I'll put it at A because I do have Avengers movies that I'd put above it. Like, I think this did everything, and the pacing's good, Avengers. but it has the same effect issues that I think Captain America did. Why? Something feels janky about it, I and don't I know. don't know what it is. Even on retrospect, it's like certain things just feel awkward. Dude, this is where this is the movie that really, like, Star- like, nothing ever did this before. It did, though. It's not the first to do that. Monsters did it 40, or not 40, like 80 years ago. Abbott and Costello meet Dracula. There's like 15 different monsters all doing a different thing while a comedic duo from an entirely different thing are doing their thing and brought it all together home. Just because it's superheroes doesn't mean much. There was also a Justice League TV special that brought together a bunch of TV shows. It's just a matter of time that superheroes got popular at this point. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that it was a big budget movie. Yeah, I don't know. I think this movie, for one, the nostalgia that I hold for this movie thinking honestly like if you look br- i think if you break it down and godzilla did it too avengers 1 is probably some of the best mcu content that we've gotten oh in terms of writing definitely like it's actually manages to have a successful character direction between several different characters balancing it even to the point where there's dead time that they could have cut this out and it still would have worked mm-hmm. It manages to focus on every character within a certain margin to make sure that it works evenly, giving us also some of Captain America's most, icon- most iconic lines, and then also balancing an entire action scene where there's an alien invasion, and it doesn't feel forced. No, that's uh, that that that's why I that think moment in the movie nice. where they start pouring out of the portal is was like so b- b- massive to see uh, in in the in the theater. Like you were like. They're fucked. The MCU's over. Bye. And then it's like you, it, you get that hope, right? It's like I don't know. I, I I went and saw this in theaters. It was amazing. Effects aside, I I I personally would put it at S just because of what it did. I, I, I my only thing for A is that I love this movie, but I I but there's I, more. The, there's ones that are there's better. Avengers movies that there's like title Avengers movies that I would put above it. You put Age of Ultron in S? I didn't think about that for a second. Avengers at S. Avengers at S? Avengers at S. <laughs> I was about to say. Because I, like, I remembered something about the writing of Age of Ultron. Put Avengers at S. In my 
<laughs> I was like, I was like, like you it want... all came back to me, and I was like, hey, wait a second. <sighs> all right, guys. Iron Man three. Iron Man three. Oh God. C or D. C or D. I was thinking D because the way they do the ma- the Mandarin, you're like, oh, it's the Mandarin, and then it's like, I am the Mandarin. Shut your whore yeah, mouth. Yeah, they do a fake fake out thing. Rhodey was cool, but they made him Iron Patriot instead of War Machine just for, like, it makes sense in the movie, but it was also kind of like, we didn't even get anything as War Machine, really. We got, like, five minutes of it. I'll put it in C, because personally, I don't think it's any worse or better than Iron Man 2. I think it's worse because of how many people talk about us. We really got to see Ro- or Tony for Stark's character shine. It's like, for the lack no, of no, we AC- didn't. We didn't see the alcoholic a hole. For the lack of for the lack of ACDC, D. Is that a problem though? Not necessarily, but still. Thor: The Dark World, easily C. Better than. See, but I wouldn't put Iron Man 3 below this Thor movie. I would. Uh, this has much more character direction in it. This is a Thor movie. Iron Man 3 is not an Iron Man movie. That's boring. Anyway, <laughs> so is Iron Man 3. <laughs> Iron Man 3, Iron Man 3 you get fun. to make him make, see him make him gadgets, and he kills people with those gadgets? It's, still it's not really a great boring. movie, but at least it's fun. Is it? It is. I've always thought, since the very first time I watched it, the whole subplot with the superpower thing was stupid. <laughs> they get really bright red and explode, and it's like, oh, look Kamikaze! out. Kamikaze! Oh. They're, they're bombs. Well, and then you get to see how many armors he's made. That's about the coolest part of the movie, and then they all blow, blow up. up. I always thought the Dark Elves were just shit villains. That's because they've always been that way. But that's but Thor for at le- you. At least Thor 1 had a okay villain plot that... Loki unleashes the armor. Yeah. That's it for Thor 1. Fuck. Dark elves try to create an interdimensional war. And you got to admit, that one big guy is pretty scary. It's an amazing costume. Yeah. It's beautiful. The parts of, like, it's a facet... It's like... Between two things. And then you also get the first reference to an actual Korg in that movie. You get a, you And he get, looks accurate. Yeah, but... And he doesn't sound like Taika Waititi. This is the first time we see other Infinity Stones. The first time we see a Infinity no, Stone. No, because Truly we, called. We get... Does the Tesseract true. called one? Yeah, but... No. But we get... To, we see all of them. Because that one scene where he's in the the water. That's not in this movie. That is in this movie. No, no it's not. No, it's not. It's Age of Ultron. That's Age of Ultron. Yeah, it is. Because he goes off on his own thing, and then he's yep. like, I'm back to fight a robot. <laughs> yep, you're right. But it is called an Infinity Stone, and that was kind of the setup for the and rest of the... And then we get the, the Collector. And it's then been a long time since I've watched Dark World. guide into <coughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. I think this movie did a whole lot more than Iron Man 3, even for the Thor as a character and for the MCU. Iron Man 3 was like, look, he has PTSD, and he's not an alcoholic. And it also got rid of John Favreau from directing, and we're like, "Can you please come back and be in the movie, even though we said you couldn't direct?" Uh, Which happy. obviously took the paycheck. I mean, right? All right. I, I don't know. Winter Soldier. I'm putting this at at B. Really? It's overrated. I think it's overrated. It was overplayed. I've seen this movie more than probably any other MCU movie just because it's always on. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. There's it's original overplayed. plot details that were so much better. Is it a great movie? Does it have some of the best fight scene, hand-to-hand fight scenes we've ever gotten in the MCU? Absolutely. But it's overrated to me. I mean... It's so overplayed. I Just because it's overplayed doesn't take away from its quality. It really... It, well, that's the thing. The quality isn't as... Like, it's... It looks good. It's written well enough. And the fight scenes are good. But it's basically just a Mission Impossible movie. That's a dime a dozen. It doesn't have anything that makes it remarkably Captain America. And then also them just like, look, see, if they took out the whole Bucky thing, it wouldn't even really be a Captain America movie. I mean, It's it just because ru- he's there. It, the twist of S.H.I.E.L.D. being in Hydra, that was... Nothing new. I know it's nothing new, but... I just remember like all of the non like Marvel Comics fans being like, "Oh shit." They also did that in Infinity War though. Yeah, well, because they don't know comics. 
I know. This but. happens every five minutes. The plot's nothing special. I just think people latch on to those fight scenes and latch on... I, I don't know I mean, what first the introduction Bucky, to Bucky Bonds is back. Well, it's not. not. Not first introduction to Bucky. First introduction to uh, Falcon. Which is nice. And Which we also nice. got Batrock. Batrock. Something I never expected in a live action movie. Who? Batrock the Leaper. Oh, the Leaper. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The character that no one would have ever made into a live action movie, and here he is as an international terrorist, essentially. Okay. Paid terrorist. Hey, okay. rob our boat from us. Mercenary, if you will. Um, he's made multiple appearances. All two. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I would not. I would not put that movie over A above above B. I don't think it's truly any better plot wise than the first Captain America okay. movie. For the sole fact, like it's, I think I think the first I like Captain stuff America that movie happens is in better. It. For me, as a for me personally, is it a great movie? I I think so, but it's just that. It's like the first child, you know? You grow to hate it. I think the Winter Soldier loses something that is innately Captain America. And they tried to go with the idea of, like, what happens when Captain America has to question his allegiances. Because he's Captain America. Yeah. It's happened several times in the comics. He's like, I don't have faith in the government. I'm going to go do my own thing. When he became Nomad and all this kind of stuff. And we see that twice in the MCU. Well, and the second time does it better. Well, he doesn't ship him, his stars and stripes away. He's still, like, uh, has allegiance to the United States, just not S.H.I.E.L.D. It's because it did what happened in the first time in the comics. He kept the idea of Captain America. But at the same time, they did it, like, by watering down the things that he questions. Like, how could I trust S.H.I.E.L.D. if it's actually Hydra? And then nothing. <laughs> Okay. There was also There's a, some really cool moments, like my, one of my favorite Captain America the scenes. The Nick Fury in, fight in scene. That, but one of my favorite Captain America scenes is when he takes out that jet with the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's some of the best Captain America ever. I mean, every time, any scene where Captain America throws a motorcycle over his head is amazing to me, even though he just breaks it in that one. Yeah. But, like, I'm thinking of the Age of Ultron scene where he is driving toward and just throws the motorcycle, you know? And what's, what's his name? Zola. Yeah. I liked having him in the movie. But they could have just checked a regular computer. Mm-hmm. It felt like a waste of a really goofy, interesting villain that they could have actually used for something of like, holy Isn't crap, there, we have to fight like a, a giant body. robot. Yeah. Yeah, with a, yeah. All we got was basically the head and the torso with right. no arms or legs. Which, yeah. at this time in the MCU, that's fair because they were going in a different direction that was a little yeah. bit more serious. Yeah, more a little more grounded. Which, I'll give them that one. So that I mean, one, it gets yeah. it makes sense. And I think Zola is also looks creepier than just a giant stretched out face on the stomach of a Jack Kirby drawing. Yeah. yeah. But I think with all, like, there was different rewrites, if I'm not mistaken, and one of them featured the Punisher being in the movie, for God's sake. Really? It's the a- one who saves Nick Fury was supposed to be the Punisher. There's that truck it backs into the cops. That was supposed to be driven by Frank Castle. So the story goes. Hmm. I well, think that would have had... Change. Kevin Feige didn't like the Punisher. Why? That's a thing that he's talked about. Marvel Knights characters. He didn't like that they were more violent and stuff like that. He likes the more classic style comics. Mm. To that I say it's like you just didn't want to deal with having an R rating because it makes the movie harder to sell. But that's just me. It was also Disney. Disney. It wasn't back Dis- then. No. Well, uh, Disney still owned them at this point. Winter Soldier. After Avengers, that's when Disney started getting more. I think Iron Man 3 was one of the... Was it one of the final ones without Disney? I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the first one. I think I it know. was the first one, actually. Yeah. Because the whole thing was is it was supposed to be Demon in a Bottle. And then Higher Up said no. And then yeah. Fabro said, well, I'm not going to direct that. And they were like, okay. Are you want to be in the movie? You still want to be in the movie? Guardians 1. I think A. S. You think all the way in S. Hear me out. This one had more significance to Marvel as a company. That's fair. Like They literally even changed the characters in the comics to fit that movie. Uh, it, and it, cha- it changed their pipeline. It changed how the movies were made. Entirely. 
let alone this movie also features probably more prosthetic or not prosthetic more physical effects than some of these other ones to yeah. a certain margin it, at this time it's probably the most important movie in the mcu since avengers that movie did more for the mcu and comics as a whole than anything yeah yeah because of james fucking gun james gun understands that like hey i can take these barely known characters and actually do something why do we, interesting why do, why are we talking about the fact that Guardians of the Galaxy is the most successful trilogy out of all of them. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is even the first movie to hold a box office for two weeks in the MCU since 2018. Yeah. Since Black Panther. <laughs> Infinity War didn't even do it the same. Really? Endgame Damn. did, though, right? Not like Black Panther did. Not like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 did. The percentage drop in how much ticket sales and money, well, it was still more money, in- in- but game, it didn't hold. Endgame like came did. out with a bunch of other movies around that time, too. So did Infinity War, though. Yeah. It was summer blockbusters. Yeah. Yeah, May. May's a rough time. To be able to hold the box office for two weeks like it did, Black Panther came out in February. Mm hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy came out at the beginning of May. Which is a hard time for movies. I think that's a remarkable thing for Guardians of the Galaxy to hold that much power. And especially this came out at the right time that you had people this is two years after Avengers everyone's like oh yeah Marvel uh huh and, and then the trailer comes out and they're like this theme. is catchy music who are these guys what's going on there's a tree <laughs> that kind of stuff oh my I god think. it's the end from uh, Lord of the Rings <laughs> it's tree beard I remember seeing that trailer and crapping my pants like that was the first MCU movie I saw in a theater that was out of all these that was the first one huh that was the first one I saw in a theater everything else I saw from a blockbuster or on TV I that saw, was the first movie. I was like, I need to see this movie. My parents. I only saw Iron Man, Hulk, Avengers, and I think I saw Thor: Dark World. I in, saw. I in, I've seen every single one of these in theaters. in theaters except for the Hulk. I was gonna say the rest of these. I can tell you exactly I remember, where I was and how many times I've seen them. In a I theater. remember the Hulk because at AMC they had green ketchup for their hot dogs, for the Hulk. Yeah, I I went to go see Iron Man. Like Iron Man, I was like the first one I saw and then I went to see I don't Iron Man 2 because I didn't go see Incredible Hulk um, I went and saw Thor I went yeah I've seen all of these in theaters Captain America was one that I was really broken up about in like third grade not being able to see it in theaters though I don't think I, I saw Thor I didn't think I, don't, I saw I remember watching Thor in my sister's bed- bedroom because she bought the disc for some reason, she had it, and I remember watching. It. I was like, "Wow!" Because Thor, I was like, pro- "Hot buff guy with blonde hair, with no eyebrows, <laughs> no eyebrows." And then, yeah, but uh, everything after I feel like everything after Iron Man three I've seen in theaters because we, we were older at that point, and right. I was like, "Dad, for these n- these uh, these ones, I was like, you have to take me to this." For everything past, I think, I think Civil War. What was the first one we went and saw together? Was it Civil uh, War? Nope. Uh, no. Spider Man Homecoming. Spider Man Homecoming. Dang. So all the way down here. We're getting there. Yep. The first one we saw together was Homecoming. And everything everything past Homecoming we've seen together almost. Almost. Almost everyone. Almost every I think Captain Marvel's an exception. I think Actually I, I didn't see Captain Marvel in theaters. I saw Captain Marvel in at my I don't, house. And I, I don't think we saw Black Panther together. Yes, we, we, we did. did. We did. We went to we, Union Station. We went you to Union Station. It. Oh, I did hate it. Yeah, big screen, but you just sat 15 feet away from the screen. That's or at least we did that day. Not not only that, because we sat in a, a space we, that was optimal. Yeah, and we 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 had a crying baby. I don't remember a crying baby at I, all. You don't remember crying baby? I don't remember uh, crying baby. No, really. I think you have an implanted memory. No, I don't remember crying. I don't remember, I remember a crying, crying baby, baby at all. I think you're full of shit. I, <laughs> Moving on, Avengers: Age of Ultron. I saw that one at Union <sighs> Station. That was the first one I saw at Union Station. I'm gonna put it in B. I think that's fair. I want it to go in A, but I know we we so many problems in writing. There's problems with writing. They wasted Ultron, big waste of Ultron. Like one of the most scary. I think he's a scarier villain than Thanos, um, because he actually killed like the Avengers. Yeah. In a comic line, like he not not just like Thanos killed him, but they came From back. The Ultron other side of the them. universe. Ultron went personal. Yeah. He made it so that way, yeah, it's like, I have a trophy room, mm-hmm. which the Hulk has even done before, but right. point stands. 
nowadays that Thanos has also done that, but built on the backs of these other characters doing it because no one cared about Thanos. Right. No one cared about Thanos until that. Ultron was, like, the coolest villain to me for a long time. Just because it's like, oh, he's like the Terminator. Even over Doom? But smarter. Doctor Doom? Different kind of villain for a long time to me. There was a certain point where I reached an age and I was like, hey, wait a second. Marvel has, like, really only one true villain. <laughs> Um, well, they w- th- we got a reuse of the reuse of uh, Ultron and what, what if, if. TV, and I still think they should bring him back with White Vision. They should bring him back and have him be the main villain <laughs> for years instead of Kang. Instead of Kang, who's a weekender, a weekender for the Fantastic Four, no, rather not not just the Avengers, the Fantastic Four. It's a weekend thing for them. He like he'll go away and come back later. Doctor Doom is a constant threat. Ultron is a constant threat. For God's sake, the Hulk is a constant threat. Hulk is a bigger Hulk villain a than Kang. Kang. <laughs> and now he has Bruce Bruce ba- Banner's brain. That should be terrifying, because the Hulk should still have a little bit of do it. Yeah, <laughs> he should still have like a finger on the Let wheel. The hate flow. Because even That's Professor kind of Hulk has been the even terrifying per- case. Even Professor Hulk lashes out like he can still get mad. Like our prefer, I feel like our Professor Hulk so far has just been like, eh, I'm mad. Eh. Right. That like She Hulk fight should have hinted at him like, what happens if he gets angry? <laughs> right. <laughs> While he's you Professor mean the one Hulk. that they retconned right there in the show that Hulk fight. Did they retcon it in the show? No, the where she was like, I don't like this ending. We're doing a different ending. Oh, no, ending. I meant the one at the beginning of the show. Oh, okay, Where okay. they destroy the tiki bar yeah, that okay. came out of nowhere. And was, yeah. I built when we were like, going. wow, this show might be really good. Yeah, like, the first episode <laughs> wasn't that bad. The first three episodes I thought were awesome. I don't even remember the third one. Or the first two episodes. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the second one's the one I, where they fight. Is it? I yeah. thought that was the first one. Uh-uh. Because he's training her how to be a Hulk. I thought that was still in the first episode. No, the first one's an introduction. It's like, this is how I got here. And then we go to the second episode. I think. I haven't watched She-Hulk since it came out. Dude, I just remember. And then the ending was so dumb. That's the worst ending to any show that's ever existed in the history of the universe. Oh, it's not. Trust me. Oh, no. (laughs) No, I'm over-exaggerating. Lost. I'm over-exaggerating, but. The only funny thing I a lot of people like Lost ending. The only the only thing I the only thing I found funny about that that whole damn thing was the fact that the little uh, lens hood on the uh, on the lens of the Kevin Kevin bot looked like Kevin Feige's hat. Oh no! I thought the robot idea was funny. It just feels like it was kind of made me so angry. I remember watching that episode being like, "What the fuck is happening? (laughs) What this is I." This is too. You're not Deadpool. <laughs> no, that's the thing, though. I she mean, she kind of was she before Deadpool that, was yeah. even a thought. So that's within character. Really? Even Doctor Doom did stuff like that to a certain degree. There's a point where Doctor Doom holds Stanley and Jack Kirby at gunpoint. Really? That's a comic book. It's like, make me win. No, no, no. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> make me win. Um. Anyway. Okay. Ant Man One. I think it's a solid. Never seen Kang break reality. B. I think Ant Man One's an A because I was singing Air B, but like, I think Ant Man One. It kind of did that Guardians thing, right? It took a character that like I remember being, like, how old was I? Like, what was that? Twenty fourteen still, summer of two thousand fourteen, or was that two thousand fifteen at that point? Like this is two thousand fifteen. All right, this is so the last movie in Phase Two. Yeah, because Avengers was twenty fifteen. Yeah, that one. Twenty fourteen so was yeah, Avengers. That would have definitely been twenty fifteen. Yep. I remember watching, hearing about them making an Ant-Man movie, and I was like, how are they going to make a movie about Ant-Man? Pope. And then I loved it. Yeah. It took a character that I did know about, thought was a joke, and actually made it good. Why would you think he was a joke? Because he's Ant-Man. You know why I thought he was a joke? Because in Super, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 1, <laughs> you could all, he only was used for one thing, and it was to solve the puzzles in the map. And then... He only he only got this big, and it made me really mad that you couldn't get smaller. Yep. I liked these animated movies that came out, and Hank Pym was in them as Ant Man, and he was kind of a jerk. The Wasp Hank did Pym's the same a dick. Thing. Right? Yeah. No, he yeah. really is. He was a dick in the comics. He's remember, a horrible person. You remember when we were supposed to in get comics? A- most of these people are horrible, horrible people. Oh yeah. And people are like, "Oh, DC is so dark and depressing." It's like, it's a weekend for Batman to go save puppies, for <laughs> God's sake. 
Iron Man gets blackout drunk and murders people. <laughs> Screw you guys. You know, Batman, Iron Man's Batman if he killed people. Even though Batman doesn't kill people. An actual like, playboy that was just like, I'm just going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> speaking of Iron Man, the, that scene in Iron Man 1 where he's just punches the guy into the wall 15 feet. Yeah, no, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's murder. That's I'm like, you straight. punched his chest cavity in. You Not just his chest cavity, his <laughs> spine is gone. <laughs> the guy was a pile of pudding on the ground and after then, that. Then someone gets mad about the warehouse scene where he fucking kills people. And it's like, okay, it's fair that, okay, Batman has a rule. It's like, but we all know that when he's doing these... These are horrible things to do to a person. It kills people. Yeah. This guy's going to have to spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. If that. <laughs> right. He's going to be he in an iron lung. <laughs> this, might be, this might be it. Be iron he lung. gets one more Christmas, and that's it. <laughs> he is going to be his, on the backs his, his of his greeting cards and milk cartons his, for the rest his of his family's lives. His one more lives. Christmas is in September. You know, I have a theory on why Ant-Man 3 wasn't as good as the other two. Because uh, it was written poorly. Louise wasn't in it. I would also agree with that. <laughs> I think that comes down to it being written poorly. Someone pitched the like some fan, and it's been around for years now, but they want an entire recap of the MCU told by by him. I'd watch it. I think that'd be like an awesome, just like little like short, like group. It's so short. easy. It's so just easy. Paid. Put him in front of a green just, screen, if that. Just put him in a room. Literally, just sit there, put a camera on, and him. put a, tele- a teleprompter in there. Like people would buy Disney Plus just to watch that. Yeah. God, we gotta get into that executive room and kill all of them and be all right, the new start up. Civil War. This was like the new beginning. Yes, I agree. I think it's either A or a strong B. Um, but a, I think I don't think it's quite S. Yeah, a, I don't think a. it's quite S. But guys, this is. I remember. This was a big. S- deal. Uh, the, our Spider-Man. group text when I think Connor sent. Guys, Spider Man! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! And then I came into school 15 and minutes later, and I was like, I already knew this because I follow leaks. <laughs> and then I was like, Ah! And then that, and then that's what happened. So I'd say A. I'd say solid A. We get uh, we, this is the introduction of not only Spider Man, Black Panthers in this movie, right? Um, who else is this? Is that it? Wanda? No, Wanda's been a thing. Yeah, in terms of introductions, you only get those two. Yeah. It sets up where they are in Infinity War. This is basically an Avengers 2.5. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that. It's not a Captain America. It's it's not. No, it's it's an Avengers movie. Once again, it falls name. to the same problem that I have. It's barely a Captain America movie. This one, I would say, is not a Captain America movie. Right. However, they just needed it the still slot. worked. Oh, they, I guess we just... introduced Zemo, which is now becoming a much bigger character. Yeah. 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 And he's the not like the comics done with you yet. entirely, but I do like him. And it explains uh, Rhodey Stark's parents' death. Right. It gets a little bit yeah. more in depth. Which, wasn't there an article in the original um, Iron Man where, like, he died in a plane crash? I honestly don't remember. I remember it being slightly different, but yeah, These that's movies are how many years apart, though? Fair, fair. It's a lot. And different studios were making them. Yep. Eight years? Well, it was, 2008, Marvel, it was Marvel Studios 2016? Under yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Paramount was the... Was this the start of Phase 3? E- no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Because Ant-Man was the last movie of Phase 2. I remember Doctor Strange being a big deal for some reason. I remember everybody throwing a fuss about Doctor, well, Doctor Strange, Strange is because next. it was an introduction to like the mystic part of the yeah. But like I thought it was Earth. because it was like the first. Oh, maybe it was it was the new like the first new character of the phase. Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe that's what I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, because there wasn't any. Speaking of Doctor Strange, that's next. I think it's a strong A. I think it's a strong A. Um, I remember, t- uh, my like my parents going to see this movie and being like. I didn't know what was happening the whole time. And I remember being nervous going into this movie. People, people were like, it was really hard to follow. And I'm like, y'all are idiots. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I remember like, hearing that review. Like, <laughs> for like people that don't like follow, understand anything comic books, or like, they'll be like, oh yeah, I, I, I like watching movies. And then they watch that and it's like, this is a point A to point B if simple plot. Yeah. If, if you've watched Inception, 
This, this is isn't like, even as hard as that. I know. If you've watched Inception, this should be simple for you. This isn't even as complex as Batman Begins. Exactly. Yeah, dude. I was. I remember being like really nervous going to see this movie because I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be really annoying and hard to follow." And I was like, "I don't know what what was so hard about that." I, I remember. I thinking think it's that, that the they were the confused by visuals. Maybe that they were like, the building's oh. turning, the building's turning, like, bunga chunga, building's turning. Me no, me no fire. It's like God. It's not hard. No, it character do thing. And then, setting, and then setting, obviously setting. we get the introduces to the sor- to the sorcerers and stuff in this movie. Hold on, I gotta check this real quick. Okay, we're still good. We're forty five minutes in. We have so many more movies left. Man, it'll be it'll be a little extra episode. longer. It'll be fine. What's next? Guardians two. Yep. That come out before Spider Man Homecoming. Uh huh. I would say this is not as good as the other two. Yeah, it's not as good as the other two, but it's still good. A- I would say strongest B in this in this list. I would agree with that. The strongest of Bs, you know what I'm saying? Um, also, I'm I would say that Guardians of the Galaxy 1, I just remembered something about it. It is also the first movie that we get in full explanation for the Infinity Stones. It, yeah. Jam- apparently James Gunn we thought that of up it in like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, he just pulled it out of nowhere. I think we get inj- this is a good movie because these are good movies because they start off they all start off the same they start off with a good music number then we get into them fighting something or getting shot at with with Guardians one and then we get in the rest of the movie right you have moment of characters doing thing action scene and it sets the tone further plot yep and that and it sets and it, it, you're right it sets the tone for the rest of the movie you're 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 and it gets you in. Right, it's it like is the a baby group dancing classic, scene. That makes it a, l- it a lot warmer of a movie. Yeah, baby Groot's in this movie, and it even kind of sets it up. It's just like it's it's basically about <laughs> children. <laughs> baby Groot. <laughs> yeah, him just, just like, murdering rats. And uh, my favorite scene though is whenever they're like Yondu and Rocket and uh, baby baby Groot are walking, and then baby Groot's looking all tough and shit. He's like, "Yeah, I'm about to fuck shit up." <laughs> <laughs> Taser your face. It's because he's also a child that can just murder. Sh- yeah, throw his arm through I three people saw, at once saw, and then toss just, him off of a. I remember laughing my catwalk. ass off when he was ro- like running after the the dude who kicked him. Yeah, <laughs> and like just picking him up and throwing him off the. <laughs> I'm like, yo. <laughs> Baby Groot's OP. Baby Groot's amazing. Oh. Also, so like apparently. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 t- only takes place like a few months after the first one. I thought it was like a year. Maybe a year, but like But it's yeah, it's not long. It's, but and I think there's Because in the main timeline, I thought it said like 2014 Guardians of the Galaxy 2014 qu- Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. I thought it was more like beginning end though, like yeah. of thought, the year. Yeah. But and the timeline's weird here cuz it's like if you like look up official orders, it'll tell you to watch Guardians 1, Guardians 2, Civil War for timeline. But I always break it up and go Guardians 1, Civil War, Guardians 2, just so I don't have to all the Guardians all at once. Yeah, that's fair. It helps break it up a little. But yeah, Guardians... And and you're like, oh, there's some time... Pa- if you're watching, if you're binging it, like a nerd with no life like me would do, um, you, it's like I there's some space there. I haven't either I haven't in like a these year. I have been so many... Oh! Like, what you do? I broke it. Because uh, you have to now watch the shows that go in between. Yeah. Oh, but you man. don't. But you don't. You don't. But you don't. Anyway, Homecoming. What's our What's our thoughts here? What's our thoughts here, Wyatt? Honestly, kind of hard to say. Uh, I think because it's I, not. Because I actually watched it again, like, the other day. And part of me is like, I feel like I've been too harsh on it. I think it's better than Guardians 2. I would say, for me personally. So I would put it at, like, the lowest of A's. Personally. I I'm could be w- talked on a B. I that. mean, it, for the fact that it's, like, so, it was such a pain to get it set up, and, like, ha- and the payoff is that Spider-Man's in the MCU now. And you actually get a pretty all right Spider-Man story. You very do. And people complain style. about... Oh, Iron Man's too much. If you go back and watch it, Iron Man's not really in it that much. Right. And if anything, he's more of an obstacle than like an actual piece of the movie. Right. 
What's he do? He saves that one. He's boat. literally the inciting incident that Spider Man's just like, okay, I have to learn to do this myself. Mm-hmm. This movie s- tries to set up that he isn't Iron Man Jr. Right. That he is his own person. He is his own character. And then it gets derailed by Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah. Infinity War and Endgame did more for the whole Iron Baby thing than anything else. Especially with the Iron Spider suit being introduced. And yeah. And that threw off Far From Home because there was definitely something going on there. And Tony Stark being tied to it makes sense. Well, but then it just goes downhill. I think that's the reason they changed the colors of the Iron Spider suit. Because they're like, oh, we're going to get more of those Baby Junior comments. I think they changed it and it looks hideous. I think... It they looks so much worse than the OG. St- stuck with the original colors, sh- right? Red, gold, because it's iron. If you like, make it like Iron Man's stamp of approval for gods, because everyone can tell in the universe itself that, like, oh, Spider Man, he's right. working with Especially Iron Man. Especially since you could look at these suits in Spider Man PS4 side by side now, it, it's just so bad. This, I think, the MCU Spider Man suits, other than like the very first one, and the five seconds of the very last one. And, like, the black one from the very end <laughs> of the second movie, most of them are trash. Yeah. It's like, this is great. And then you're, like, looking at it further, and then they go like, into something I else. I don't and get it's like, the whole, like, I really didn't like the, the, the suit. The integrated suit. The integrated suit. It makes me mad. Something about spider. looking at it. I didn't like that, It man. looks really crappy. Well, part of the issue, so, there's a reason. Toy sales. But also, so... The imp- the Spider Man was shot in Civil War with one that kind of a lot with raised webs kind of more look- and it looks great. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Do you not? I like it, but I do think that having one without raised webs is a lot. I mean, it better. makes a lot more sense. I just I I like the tactility and how it looked, but. I felt like having wet, like redoing the webs makes it a lot more. It feels like Spider Man. There's something about it that feels very classic. That there's this idea of just like going home, but yet it's a place you've never been before. And there's a word for that, and I don't know what it is. Deja vu? No. That's seeing the same thing again. It's the idea of like you're going somewhere new, but it's you like it enough that it almost feels home. And that's how I felt about with the new Spider-Man suit. There was parts of it that I didn't quite like, but seeing that it's something about it felt like what I read when I was younger. Yeah. But, mm. I mean... Except for his web shooters. Par- you don't like his web shooters? I feel like they could be better. But Just a little par- tweaking. I mean, I, I like him better they, than Andrew's web shooters. See, the tiny little wrist ones. They do, Most of the time, they do a full CG double on Spider-Man. Right. Which... I mean, it looks great in most scenes, but in some, bro, it just looks bad. Like, if you just fucking standing there, just make it t- make it Tom. Well, and I feel like they did that more in, in the, Far From Home. Far From Home, mm-hmm. and yeah. He did a lot more of but his that, stuff. But that, that was one of the things that took me out of uh, um, No Way Home. Was just, not what, No Homecoming. Way Home. Uh, Homecoming was just the fact that, like, the CG doubles weren't that great. Yeah, I, let's move it to B. I'd say it's below after and this I'll conversation. Still take it. You know what I mean? Cuz yeah. uh it's a high B. I honestly think it's yeah, I it's high B. I think it's the I second best the vulture MCU suit looks Spider-Man. great. Oh yeah, I yeah. The vulture looks fantastic. Vulture's best part of that movie <laughs> suit wise, I think. Thor like Ragnarok. I love Spider-Man's homemade suit. Oh. I think we have one of the strongest A's. If not the strongest A, I think it's just See, when I keep saying there's new starts to the MCU, this is another way that I mean. It's almost like a reboot in tone every five minutes in this period of time. You went from Guardians 1, and then you had like this new tone of like, okay. People humor, like funny. Humor. And then Civil War happened to like, okay, crossovers. Let's do this. And then you get Thor Ragnarok that perfects those two ideas. Thor and Hulk, b- buddy road trip. And then Love and buddy Thunder Cop. shits on it. <laughs> He's a friend from work. It works. Throwaway line from a kid on set that day. Yep. They're like, we're keeping it. I think it, I, I think it's the highest A tier so far. Um, I don't because I, I don't think it has everything to be an S. I don't know about A. To me, it's a low A. You think it's a low A because it's it's it feels like 
minimal effort from Taika Waititi in terms of comedy. Because, I like, watching some of the other stuff that he's done, comparing it to that, and then I guess we do have a more minimal, and that is Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. To me, Thor Ragnarok is the new, that was the new. That's what we saw coming forward even to this point. Well, and it was so, the colors in it were very vibrant. Yeah. There was a lot of production design that I really loved that looked very We got a little curvy. hint of of uh, the the Hulk storyline. World War Hulk. World War Hulk. Yeah. World War Hulk. World War Hulk. Planet Hulk. Aardvark. Planet Hulk. World War Hulk. Where? It's when God. He, when he, that's World when he comes back and kills Hulk. the Illuminati, right? That's when he's just like, you guys sent me where to do what? And then he and doesn't then kill, kill any of them because then he's like, I'm a better man than you. Yeah. I'm a big green monster and I let you live when you thought I would murder everyone on this planet. Mm-hmm. He does definitely hurt them really badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they kill his wife. Oh, yeah. Well, his pregnant wife. someone else kills his wife. I thought it was them. No, it was the dude that he overthrew. He had, like, a bomb ready to go. And then he was just like, the only reason I'm here is because they kicked me off Earth. Yeah. I'm okay. done. I didn't even have to go through this horrible pain and hardship if it wasn't for them. BP1. I think that one's an A. Yeah. yeah. The music and production design's amazing. The costumes are good. The visual effects up until the end, pretty damn good. Right. Like, until they ran out of time and money, it looked fantastic. There's some problems I have with Killmonger's lines, just because it's just like logical sense sitting down. And I only say this because in the comics, his mom is a white lady. She's a Hydra agent. That's white as white you can get. That's literally a like a Nazi. Nazi. Yeah. And then his dad is literally from Wakanda. Mm-hmm. By that logic, I can assume that it might be a little different based on the MCU and some of the things that he says. There's one thing he says. It's like, this is for all my ancestors that jumped the ship. Like, referring to, like, trying like to the, black um, empowerment, like, to the, like, extreme extent that he goes to. And then it's like, now hold on here. You were royalty, and your mommy is a Nazi. <laughs> you are not in a particularly good place to talk about this. <laughs> like, you yourself, dude, it's just like, your I mom is Hydra. I, I don't think in this continuity his mom is a... Hydra. Hydra. We don't know who his mom is. Right. Yeah. Not talked about. Yeah. Ever. But that's one of the first things that I thought of when hearing that line in the theater. It's like, it's like the line does make sense. And then you have the other part of it. You're Wakandan royalty plus Hydra. And this is the first time we get to see the vibranium mine, the thing that's been ruffling the, the feathers of the MCU since uh, Avengers, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Vibranium. Vibranium. Yeah, vibranium this, <gasps> vibranium, vibranium that. My shield's made of vibranium. It absorbs all vibrations, but I'm going to bounce it off that wall. Yep. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Uh-oh. It's the big one. The second big one. Oh, fuck. Uh, Infinity War. I think this I think might be a. the highest it's A. It's an A. It's the highest A. I think it's the highest A we got. Because it balances stories, even if it hurts the Guardians. Yeah. They got some they got all this out of order. If they're doing release dates. Yeah, they it's yeah. What if they're doing continuity? They're not. They're not. Definitely oh not wait, never guy. mind. Yeah, no. They were just doing it by whatever. Um Infinity War was so hype. Big deal. It was like, it was the it, it built so much hype around the movie. And then you it so much hype that when you at least for me, when I sat down in theaters, we didn't see this one together. We no, didn't. we uh, we didn't see this one because I went with Webb. Yeah. Um, but I remember sitting down in theaters, not believing that I was there to watch that movie. Like I was like, no way, no way, I'm about to watch this movie. Like it's it like the, and then like you're it's constantly, but it, it does so high tense, funny. And it just trades back and forth with that, I think, really well. And it's the Russo brothers, man. I watched it in theater at Union Station because it was only five bucks for a ticket at twelve thirty or twelve o'clock at noon. And I watched people cry. And it was the funniest thing ever. Nothing even bad happens in this movie. 
<laughs> not to mention. Okay. <laughs> Nothing bad happens in this movie. This movie did something that I cannot get over. If everyone dies it at the end of part one, mad. what? Even everyone's if just like, when you snap the gauntlet, it kills half the universe. It's like because that's what he wished for, you jackass. My thing is, it's like it does whatever you want it to. It's the concept of reality, space, time, and light. It's everything. Like everything mixing together to do whatever you want. You know, no, when you snap the fingers, it just kills people. That's that's what it does. That's that's the only thing it does. And it's like, did you not watch what he just does? Like, oh, this one, your bullets are now bubbles. It's right. like, it does whatever you want it to do. Well, even people who have never read a comic book in their life and they've only watched a handful of these movies and they go to see this and they cry because people die. You are the dumbest moviegoer in the world when you know there's a part two coming. Right, an already announced part two, and they were like, "It's coming out the next year." Back? What do you mean? How do you bring it back? Spider-Man three, Spider-Man two was announced for God's sake before this movie came out, and people were like, "How are they going to bring Honestly, back Spider-Man?" Honestly, Chadwick Boseman was the only person who was honest, and it's sad. He's like, "Well, I'm dead." He knew. <laughs> he he fucking knew. Well, my thing is, is that like the only two that I could see were emotionally charged. Was the Spider Man one. And that was ad lib, and I thought it was corny. And then m- the one that got me watching it, where I was like, ooh, right here in the heart feels. No, fuck Groot. Was when. That's the only one I cared about. When was was when Rhodey was yelling for Sam. <laughs> he was like about to get to him, and then I was like, oh no! It was there! <gasps> no. I was always was frustrated right by Bucky trying to get the cap. And then, like, he disappears, and the gun goes with him. <laughs> Doesn't the gun go with him? No, no, the Does arm the goes dro- with him. The gun drops, the arm goes with him. Because I thought him. the gun went with him for a while. No, the, the arm, arm. drops. The, the, the arm goes with him, the gun drops. And it's like... The gun is... He said Rocket couldn't have it because it's attached to hey, it. Hey, if, you, if you're going by that logic, everyone would have come back naked. I hold my point. I'm just saying. I hold my point. So what's the difference between something that you're wearing and something that you're holding? Maybe that's the arm that Nebula gave to Rocket. Was the arm that he made, but it went with him. I don't know. And why would she have saved it for that long? I don't know. Because she found out what Christmas was, and she just had it in her room to spite him. I, I really don't know. I'm going to get that arm. Shut up. He's, no. You beaver. It's mine. Did anyone ever call him a beaver? I don't think so. I think someone called him a badger. Well, Definitely badger, called him a badger. Badger is... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't call I it wouldn't, a, No, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's that low, but I will say it's on par with these movies. I was it's not say, worse. I'm, I feel bad because we are about to get to the ones that are... Bad. Bad. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like this is my... It, I think, feel like it's worse than Iron Man 3. I'd agree with that. It's worse than Iron Man 3. Because it's written poorly. It's worse they're, than Thor. They're wanting you to look at it from this perspective of just like, everyone told her she couldn't. But then okay. she did. That happens in the comics. Yeah, all right. But, but they just keep did. telling it to you. Instead they of don't showing show you. her rising they to the occasion. Show you. I like the ending fight where he's just like, go ahead, fight me, do it. She, no, blasts him. That's It's it's an Iron Man joke. It's an exactly. Indiana Jones joke. Exactly. I like that. It's funny. Like that's. Uh, but I also don't like what they did well, to the Skrulls. And then some of the, right. But, Skrulls yeah. are bad guys. Kree are bad guys. Well, it, They're both bad. My thing is, is that they had some cool moments, like the the whole spec ops stuff, where they like were going to kill. The opening sequence is yeah. cool. Yeah, where the they like season, sequence is fantastic. The mask, and then you're going underwater, and you're like flying. It's cool. And then the biggest, just like we're good guys. How do I want to phrase this? We're back. I almost since would have good guys been able to turn into other people, explicitly and, and live their lives. Plastic man, shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna delete this E tier because I don't think it. E is kind of. And we get the rest of the movies in the frame if we don't have E in there. But, yeah, I, I think e, it's easily... A, B, C, D, F, G. E is not even in the alphabet. E. I, it's one of those movies I can e. withstand just turning it on e. for noise, but as soon as I think about it, I do kind of get frustrated because it did dumb things. But from the trailer, I expected dumb things. All right. The funny scene where she punches a grandma in the face. It's good. It's hilarious. Yeah. I like the trailer. I laughed. Sequence. I laughed and people stared at me. They were like, <laughs> they were like, what's wrong with you? It's like, it's really funny. You don't think watching grannies get punched in the face is hilarious? I'm going to chin this old lady. <laughs> hey, watch me punk this old lady. Wabah! <laughs> oh, man. 
Yeah, we and got to too. introduce that video to uh, his oh, my cousin, cousin and I've never actually seen what? him make a shock <laughs> face. Got the, I'm watching I'm, the Australian guy. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chin this old lady because he punches the machine. That the, and he's like, I'm like pumped. Comic-Con. I'm gonna chin yeah. someone. I'm gonna chin someone. Watch me chin this old lady. And he just punks. <laughs> I've never seen my cousin <laughs> make a shocked face like that before. <laughs> Twenty one years of living, <laughs> I saw him make the face of shock and awe. Uh, Ant Man two. Oh, I think it's a B or a C. I Personally, enjoy it, and I really like watching it. I think it's a B. I think it lands there on the on the thing. But I definitely like it more than Winter Soldier. I personally, enjoyment wise, not actually like making wise. Personally, I like it better than the first Ant Man. Personally, there's fair qual like fair statements to that, but. I don't think it's as good as a movie. You know what I'm saying? The quality. It's kind of like I like di- they changed directors and changed visions. Exactly. Right. It's like I like 2005's Fantastic Four a lot, Is it but a I wouldn't movie? even let it touch the B tier on this. <laughs> you know? Like, but I love that movie. I would not let it touch B. That's what I was saying about the first Captain America movie. Yeah. In my heart, it's S. It's S. Yeah. But something feels jank. Right. No matter how good the soundtrack is. Uh, oh, God. Endgame. I think it's an S. I think Endgame is S. It's I think it's an S. S. That's a comic book movie. That, I cried just when they lined up to get ready to fight. Because I was like, that's an emotional sequence. All this time for this. And it's so worth it to be it's here. It's in a culmination. And then, then Iron Man died and I watched people cry and I just kind of sat there. I cried when Iron Man died. For this reason, I have a good reason for crying when Iron Man died. Not just because, oh no, Tony Stark. <laughs> no, I cried because I knew what his death symbolized for the future of everything else. And I knew it be- all changed. And I here. cried because we were seniors in high school, or going into senior year, and at the, he dies at the end of the movie, towards the end of the movie. And I was like, man, I went and saw Iron Man 1 in kindergarten. Yeah, that is the culmination of our generation. I'm like, literally all of our school time. I'm like I'm getting goosebumps talking about that because like that like we this was the MCU this that what we have on screen that was the MCU at this point that was point A to point B and I was like oh my god this How is perfect this is why I cry that's why I cry that's the next big problem How that I could that, definitely go on for I, hours about that's why I cried I didn't cry the only thing they could do is died. introduce. Villains that are bigger than Thanos, and you know what they did? They chose Kang. <laughs> <laughs> Far from home. It's like, oh, we're getting ready for more movies. They even announced Secret Wars and the Kang Dynasty. It's like, shit! <laughs> God damn it! It's like we were so close to greatness. I mean, was Jonathan Majors really good? At, like, really good part of Quantum Mania? Yeah, but like, I think he was even better in Loki. Yeah, I think he was way better in Loki. I would agree with that. Um, there was this hype. There was this idea. This was really cool, and then there gets Kang. Yeah. Ooh, time travel. Endgame had time travel. We need a time travel villain to get bigger. <coughs> time travel and multiversal travel are two different things in the Marvel universe. True. I don't know how to express that, and I don't know how to express even further. Infinity stones only work in one universe. Right. And what if pissed on that idea? Mm-hmm. They just because I'm wondering it whipped out the this. wiener and peed all over listen it. Listen to this. What if they're just doing this thing where it's like w- they're gonna re- go down the road and be like, they didn't take the the Infinity Stones from their own past. They went to different dimensions and got Infinity Stones. That's 100 percent what they were trying to describe. Yeah, because they were like, oh, if we did this, it alters the reality. Alternate realities, branching timelines, and the concept of time travel are all separate things that exist in their own contained universes. Mm-hmm. The multiverse idea exists outside of that. So Doctor Strange got it slightly more a, correct. The, the Spider Verse f- movies get it. One of yeah, one of my favorite examples of the Infinity Stones not working unless it's in their own universe, right? Is uh, there's a Council of Reeds. The Council of Reeds, and one of them opens a portal to their home dimension and like puts their ha- their other hand in it, so their Infinity Gauntlet will work because the Celestials are attacking the Council of Reeds. I'm like, that's hot. I like that. That's what happens when you have someone writing a story with a MacGuffin that knows how to work that MacGuffin. <laughs> <laughs> Far from home. I don't know if that. Do you think that was the best option to go right after <laughs> it in game? 
Like, do you think you, that low? C. C. I was thinking God mid damn. B. I was thinking like above <laughs> Ant Man and the Wasp. So much worse than Ant Man and the Wasp. You think? Oh yeah. I remember hearing people being like, "This is the first time we see Spider Man outside of New York," and it's like, one, no, it's no. not. Literally in these movie sagas, he literally goes to Washington D.C. in the last movie. It was the Germany. And we just got it. In him in Civil space. War. You think it's C? I think it's C because it also takes Spider Man, tries to reinvent the idea of him learning what it means to be Spider Man in a way that did it. just did that, and like, not even any way that's different. No Way Home is at least different. He's experiencing true grief. And he's this also one's also has trying to experience grief for, for his actions for once, like serious consequences. That's what the first movie is too, though. I mean. He gets his head in far somewhere that he shouldn't be, and then he proceeds to get everything taken away from him and learns how to be better without them. Fair. These th- those three movies tell the same exact th- story in three different ways. The last one being the best way, arguably, compared. It's better than this one, yeah. and I think the first one did it in a more impactful coming-of-age way, which they kind of set out to do. I think the second one took Mysterio, and they were like, okay, let's do something new and interesting. That's cool. Iron Man was more talked about in this movie than he was in, in, the in, first in Homecoming. Movie. And that's what people talked about, hating about Homecoming. Iron Man's dead, and he's talked about more in this movie. Literally. To the point that it's almost mildly annoying. But he also gets a special MacGuffin handed to him from Iron Man. Special dead guy glasses. Not only that, but it kind of just makes fun of the incredible trauma of what happened in Endgame. Yeah. Yeah, it just shits on it. <laughs> it treats it to, like there's a certain point I was like, okay, this is what would happen. And then I there's mean, a point that it's like, okay, now hold be, on here Like teenagers, teenagers joking about disappearing for five years, valid. Makes sense. I would joke They would it. do that. Hey, you remember that one time, guys, when we were all the same age and now Connor's five years older than us? Oh, like, it's like remember that time when yeah. we were in high school and now Jim has children? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels like now. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we're guys, uh, we're three years out of high school. Going I mean, on. Honestly. <laughs> not yet. Honestly, we, we kind of had an endgame yeah, moment. Right now. We kind of had an endgame moment. We just haven't seen each other. <laughs> right. Like, 2020. We had an endgame moment. We didn't all die. We just, well. We just Well, I, I mean, yeah. People died. Got a us. Lot, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people died. <laughs> we didn't because we're strong. Because we're young and can survive diseases, <laughs> we have we have we strong. Don't, we don't have shite immune yeah. systems. <laughs> um, COVID ruined mine. Anyway, WandaVision. I think WandaVision. It, it does a cool idea for C- television. I don't think it's better than Far From Home, though. It's not. It's not. It does cool television ideas, but the plot. I remember when everyone. This was, is our first show, by the way. This yeah, is the first, first show MCU we've gotten. show. What the, I already forgot his name, the Who? the demon. What's he called? Morbi- Mephisto. Morpheus. Mephisto. Mephisto. <laughs> Who's Morpheus? <laughs> remember? I remember. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Morpheus. It's Morpheus. <laughs> oh, I know who Morpheus is now. Morbius. You, Morbius. Morbius. Morpheus. Morpheus. Morpheus is, is the, the Sandman. Morpheus. The Sandman. I, the, I thought you were gonna say the Matrix. No, I was thinking comics. I kind of forgot the Matrix existed. Guys, there's so many people that don't matter. <laughs> what are we talking about? I don't know. Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, Mephisto. Mephisto. Would have been I remember a better villain. because that's a big deal to Scarlet Witch in the comics and to like the concept of witches. There's Agatha Harkness in this show. Isn't she? Isn't he the person that she it makes the Agatha trade with? Along. Doesn't he tear down reality, or does she? That's her. In House of M. House of M. That's all her. Yeah, okay. that's all her. The one of her earlier stories where the children come about those because mm-hmm. Vision's a robot. Right. He don't. He don't have there, no, there's no wiener, sperm. He doesn't have no wiener parts. He, he has no balls. Doesn't she make a deal with Mephisto? Yeah. Those children are part Mephisto. And Mount Wondergore is also a part of that. There's a Does whole Mephisto thing. hit, bro? No. It's more like a, have children! <laughs> he points out. his hand. So he's God and she's Jesus. Yes. Or she's Mary. Uh, but with a contract. Jesus. Yeah. So Contra- consenting. Contra- contractual <laughs> Jesus. About to make a whole lot of jokes. <laughs> she went to him to have children. <laughs> no, I think. Just a well, I, dude, the, the fact that the first <laughs> like <laughs> nothing happens in this show till episode two. When everyone at was, the end, you make me sit through two episodes of bullshit <laughs> before something happens, and you're like, okay, 
And then episode three happens, and you're like, okay. And then episode four happens, you're like, oh, shit's going down. That's I think as a TV show, it does an interesting thing encapsulating these different eras. Mm-hmm. But when you break it down as a Marvel product, the writers didn't even know who that was until fans started saying, like, where's Mephisto? I'm... This looks like that, Mephisto. That's what pissed me off. <laughs> right. And it's like, the writer didn't even know who this character that involves Wanda and her children are. It's like, that's basically the actual father yeah. of her children. That's like if Zack Snyder win the it came was out, was Agatha like, all along. Batman has parents? <laughs> no. I thought Alfred just spawned him from a bat. Like, That's what I'm saying. A it's a child like, of... I thought Alfred just oh, put some Zeus? juice on a bat and then like, he popped out. Make a bat or a like Superman a product. Ninja and it was like turtle. What's Krypton? Yeah. <laughs> put some sludge. What, wait, what do the Ninja Turtles call ooze. it? Ooze. Yeah, ooze. they put some ooze on them. Mutagen. God damn it. Anyway, Falcon <laughs> the Winter Soldier. Better than WandaVision? I, I think it's a B. It's worth a B. It's B. You think it's B? I think it's a B. You think it's better than Homecoming? I mean, I far from home. I think it's far home. from home. You think it's better than far from home? Yeah. Yeah. And all the people that talk crap on that show uh, don't understand dialogue. I think it's the one of the better of the shows. I would agree with that. Loki. Loki's Loki's the best show. Best of the shows. Loki's the best of the shows. I think Loki's the only show that's an A. So far, at least. Uh, Well, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll have a thought to that. Uh, But Black Widow. Fucking I think dude, that's that one is ass. <laughs> there is no question. I don't even care if Red Guardian's in it, and it gave me David Harbour as Red Guardian, and F. I don't even remember the one lady's name that I had a crush on when I was a child. But Laura like, Fu? huh? No, no. Uh, what's her nuts? She plays Iron Maiden in the movie, but they don't call her Iron Maiden. Scarlet Witch is mo- or Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Johansson, Black Widow, <laughs> Black Widow's mom. She Scarlet was Scarlet Johansson. She played Edie in the Mummy movies. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the actress's yeah, I, name. I, I, I yeah, but yeah, no, like I don't even care like what actors are in this movie. You chose to make a movie out of years too late about a character who's already dead. This movie would have been way one better if it came out but years be- earlier, way before. If it came between out Infinity War, Civil and War, no, between Civil War even and that where it makes sense, where it's supposed to be time wise, timeline wise, it's just so it was out of the blue. I think it was forced. The the movie it was feels like it was written happen. really fast. The CGI is really bad. I mean, the CGI was a was a product of COVID, probably. The CGI it was I in production before that was though. awful. It the was scene where she jumps off that thing, I threw up <laughs> in, my, in my popcorn bucket. <laughs> like, I Red Guardian. I that's the highlight of the movie for me. I've rewatched the movie just for, for Red Guardian. Yeah. I do not give a crap oh, shit, about that com- movie. We're two movies. We're two things away from Eternals. Have you? Eternals oh. is the lowest of the low. <laughs> we need to. ABC. Let's do a quick. Hold quick. on. Yeah. What is our time check? We are. I have to make this a part two. We're an hour and it, like, seventeen right now. minutes in. We. How many this- shows do we have left? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh, 15, shit. fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. It'll this be is going to be our new longest episode, It'll though. It'll just be a long episode. Besides, wasn't our longest episode Far From Home? Our, I think it was Far From Home. Yeah. Or, no, no, no Way, way home. home. No Way Home. It's hey, the most recent Spider-Man movie. These conversations are what's making it longer. So, Black Widow. Trash. God awful. It did cool things and then shat on them. It took what, Taskmaster. What if- Have you ever seen a dog wipe its ass on a carpet? <laughs> <laughs> it leaves a trail. That is that movie on Taskmaster as a character. I hated Taskmaster. I wonder what if? I think it's not as good as... I don't think it deserves... I like watching it more than I like watching Thor and Black Widow and Captain B. Marvel. It's easily D or C. I was going to say <laughs> low C, high D. C, low C. I think there's show. I, I'll say even D because there's shows on here that are better than it. That But aren't are, but that aren't better That's than... still better than She-Hulk and better than the Groot Shorts. Ah, the Groot Shorts aren't on this list. D or C, it doesn't really matter. There's, I'll put it at the end of C for now. There's good things and there's bad things. All right, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi A or S? Honestly. I think it's a, I think it's a very very strong A. I don't it think was it one did of the enough best for new movies. I wholeheartedly agree, but I don't think it did enough for the f- overall thing. You know what I'm saying? Like these movies up here That's are fair. very imp- impactful. The, yeah, they did things. This movie is just really good and well written and nice visual it's just effects. It's a good superhero movie. Yeah, so I think it's very Reinvented high Reinvented a character in a positive way. Yeah. Not would, just to be goofy. I would put it there on A. Eternals? 
dog water. Human it is trash. Ass. This is ass. the worst thing. They made it something. They made something that was they, somewhat interesting in the comics, and they took a shit on it. They took the idea of just like they were like, we can't have children because we're androids, and it's like, I've ne- what the hell? You guys, Dude, that I've that is the dumbest been, thing in the world. The only people I know that like that movie are people that like Zack Snyder movies, and that is not a joke. My thing is, is that if they're androids, you could have manufactured them to all be Icarus. You could have had they a mi- would literally do everything. You could have had a million it's Icaruses. An army of Superman, and you would have just taken over the universe, dude. These things. Uh, the idea uh, of the concept of like come. I don't remember the name of the fast one. The fast. The, the fast, fast one. The speedster. <laughs> she even wore red. Just call her knockoff Flash. <laughs> call her Jesse Quick. It used to be. Call a her big... Jesse Quick for all. She used to have fuck. a penis. Is what I was about to say. Okay. <laughs> she used to have a penis. She, she has ears. ears. She has ears that work normally, but she can't hear. She has super <laughs> hearing. Because she feels with the hairs on her body. And it's like, hold on a second. One, if it's an android. Why the fuck? Why is it dead? (laughs) Two. (laughs) Why does it have eardrums? Or three. Two or three. I don't remember what point I'm on. Why does it look like, like. Why is one a child? Infiltrating, I guess. I don't know. You can infiltrate. As an adult. Fair. <laughs> Probably better. Yeah. We need to get into what this. What kind of crime organization that has these deviant monster things that they're specifically supposed to be protecting them from exists in the concept of children? And Druick just made me mad. I'm. Gonna, but wasn't that I've out of the ne- comics, though? Him taking over a town like that? Yeah, Druick kind of just never, is a... Like, he's the odd the one inter- out. I love how we've just, like, there's certain plot points of the Eternals that we've just started to ignore. Eternals is trash. It's literally the worst MCU movie. It is awful. It's literally the worst. You had a good cast. You had a stacked cast. And you shit on it? The cast couldn't even save the movie. That's how bad it is. And the director's an Oscar award winning director. And you gave them. Liter- you, I wouldn't be surprised this if you even shit those- in an envelope and mailed it off. And that was the script. You could tell me that Zack Snyder wrote this movie and I would believe you, and the only reason that I would do say that, oh, no, it didn't, was because he didn't write Blue Hue, Blue Hue, Blue Hue, Blue Hue, every five seconds. <laughs> this takes the idea of a superhero team that functions and works as a family, stories and concept that works for these characters and introduces new characters as well as these characters are also new. You have side plots and concepts and artwork that could have worked, and then you take them and I'm going to do something new. Even the the idea of androids is dumb. The deviants look awful. The costumes are downright disgusting. I could get past the costumes, though. Because they're hard to look at. But it's the worst. The worst. Anyway. Is Hawkeye. Hawkeye. I think it's better than Winter, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um... I Good think that time. that's probably the next best one after Loki. I think I agree with that one. I think it's uh, sad we didn't get a Spider-Man cameo in it. But Truly. that's asking for a lot. But Especially we got Kingpin. With the, we did get Kingpin. We had Kingpin. We got trick arrows. We had trick arrows. We had trick arrows. We got, we got a giant arrow. That was like we awesome. We got a freezy arrow and an arrow that just shoots nails and paralyzes people. Because that's a war crime. <laughs> we had a growing that arrow. That one's Pim arrow. Yeah. Which was rat, which There's grew the big arrow. A whole lot of things going on in that one that's very like this is a war crime. Yep. But I love it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think okay. Next up, Spider Man: Far From Home. I think this Far From Home is a very low A or the high of this like it's above really? Homecoming. I would say that it's a low A because it actually take away the nostalgia, Connor. It reestablishes ah. all the like actual multiverse stuff and kind of makes it work in a way that it's supposed to. I'd put it there, which is the just scale. bullcrap rules that aren't time travel. <laughs> I think it's the best of the Spider-Man movies. I don't think it does as much character growth as Homecoming, but I think there's a lot more going into this movie that was a lot more heart from the people that yeah. made it. Yep. Yes. And this is movie is a love letter. This is honestly including the nostalgia. This is one of the, one of the most fun MCU movie experiences I've ever had. Right. Yeah. Watching it. And we had a one we had a great audience with our theater. And two, Yeah, that was luck of the draw. Right. But two, it was the first movie where people were going back to the theaters. You remember how packed the parking lot I was? I never saw AMC like that. And S- to this day, since then, 
the people that flooded I'm getting, the lobby look, afterwards. Look, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that. It because was amazing. we roll in after going to the theaters through COVID like a couple times with no one there. To, <laughs> million, not million, hundreds and of people. Then, and then there was a second outbreak. <laughs> it's fine. Which could probably even maybe be attributed to <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We, that movie we had proved the points of what's wrong with Far From Home by having ideas and plot points that weren't settled on based upon stuff that wasn't the scrolls. Yeah. Like there was definitely a plot. Jane, John Watts even said that. But like who bought the Baxter or the not the building. The Avengers like, Tower. Avengers Tower. I almost called it the Baxter building. We still don't know who has. We still don't know who owns it. And we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Years. nine, ten. Ten projects after that. We still don't know. Blue ball. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have any other term. They literally carved out the inside of it and had him fly through it. Yeah. And we still don't know who owned it. A whole lot of stuff going on there that I think is, like, Far From Home is a love letter to Spider-Man movies. It's nice. The suits are kind of crap. But the end sequence was great. Yep. The big fight was great. Not to mention it was the first time a superhero movie in New York has gone to the Statue of Liberty since, since X-Men, X-Men 1. Yep. Yeah. So, I'll take it. <laughs> well, I then you include the nostalgia. I got really emotional. I cried. I got really emotional during this movie. I cried um, for Green Goblin. Yep. I love Green Goblin. I love spider man This is the first time we've seen Green Goblin since 2002. In, uh, actual Green well, Goblin. Yeah, 2002, he he's like in the movie. He, but, well, he is Green Goblin. But he's like... Right. But then we have like the Goblin Jr. boy. Whatever that was, yeah. Human garbage. Um... Moon, Moon Knight. Knight. I, I like it a lot. I think it's worth a B. It didn't pay off that well. I think it's not as good as Hawkeye, but it's better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Thoughts? I'll take it. I think there's an argument to be made there. I think I liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier more, but I thoroughly enjoyed Moon Knight yeah. through. Even on the filler episodes, I was like, why is this filler? I could, I, could, I could put it behind Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I will rewatch Moon Knight quite a bit. But I don't think Actually, I'll- it's the show I've rewatched the most. Yeah, I just like I just think it, it was better, like because I think Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There was a lot of downtime that they didn't really know what to do with themselves, right? Which it is fell a, apart in pandemic but stuff. Even Moon Knight's downtime, you felt like there's you were there. actual. Plot. So that's my thoughts. Why Moon Knight is better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier? And I was very apprehensive to the costume at first, but it really grew on me. Yeah, I don't really like the Steven stuff that they did. It's supposed to be really different, but I'll take it. Mm-hmm. And England to New York doesn't, or well, London to New York doesn't right. really change much. But yeah, I think that that's a good area there. We got multiverse Dr. of madness. So the only reason I'd put it, I think it's honestly C, high C or low B. But the only reason I want to put it higher is because of the Illuminati, like the the, the Illuminati people we C. got, like like the CGI in this movie could be better. The Shumagorath stuff was wasted potential. Honestly, I'd say that's an be, Avengers level threat that they just I mean, peed on. I think it honestly could be the highest C tier we high C tier or low I would agree with that. The horror in the movie is done well because Sam Ra- Sam Raimi knows what he's doing. Yep. Yeah. Wanda is terrifying. Yep. Mount Wondergore scenes are interesting. The big let's zombie it scene it's yeah, let's let's put put it say, it's worth watching. No, it's and everyone that was like, I don't understand what's going on because I didn't watch WandaVision. You can literally pick up on the plot by watching the movie. Yep. She had kids. Congratulations, you have the media kids are gone. literacy. She wants her kids back. That's gone. her entire story. Plot of WandaVision. It took five seconds, and you she didn't, didn't even f- need I like Disney how she, like, there's a it. vision out there who's conscious. And give a fuck. Doesn't give a shit. It's about the kids. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, she, she just gives a fuck about that vision. Also... Um, I You guys are going to have to place this one because I did not watch this show. I have more thoughts about want, or the... Miss Marvel. No, the Doctor Strange 2. Okay. There's crap in it that happens, and it's like you are knuckle-dragging, pissing on fans. Like, calling the MCU Universe 616. Mm -hmm. Screw you, it's not. It's been said before. Marvel, Cinematic, Multiverse, whatever you want. Is like 1099. Yeah, it's like 1999. That. They even reference that in a Spider-Man trailer, for God's sake. It's hilarious. And then you also have the stuff where America, she's just like, I'm the only one in the multiverse, and that's why I can't dream. And it's like, the concept of you saying that and also have multiverse while also trying to say that the comics are canon to the concept of the multiverse just pisses on this idea. You could just say that 
dreams are rare if you want to go with the weird aspect of that there's more than one america there's more than one in the comics as it stands right now i'm pretty sure we've seen at least two adding one doesn't change anything dc does a better job of keeping track of their multiverses and they keep destroying them every five seconds right that says something i mean yeah marvel marvel marvel's cosmic stuff has always (laughs) been confusing for no reason yeah because Marvel refuses to truly do a retcon like DC does every so often. Like, uh, How many times has DC been reset? Like, oh, dude. Pl- mil- Since Crisis? More than on Bro. the <laughs> right. So many times. <laughs> There's been more than one Crisis. At least four? Yeah. Right. Then Flashpoint. And Marvel then just keeps then adding Flashpoint, shit. Flashpoint, and then whatever they did at the beginning then of Doomsday Rebirth. Doomsday Clock, and yeah. Doomsday Clock is its own weird, disgusting mess. And arguably, Death Metal was also one. And also this very weird small series about Milk. I don't know. Anyway, you're going to have to Marvel. play this one. I did not write, watch this one. It introduces the character. It does cool stuff and pays homage to the way that the comics were supposed to go. I think it's easily worth a C. See. It's Where better than see. What If. Better than What If. Better than Thor. Better than Iron Man 2. Nah. I like it more than Iron Man 2, but that's because Iron Man 2 is kind of boring. Say what you want, but I'm like a very small child. Sometimes I'm not always very in depth of thought, and sometimes flashy colors helps. I have, okay, Thor: Love and Thunder. D. D. You think D or it's F? A D? D. I do. It's either D or F. I it's think it's one or the better other. than Iron Man three and Thor one. No. You don't think so? God no. They once again took a beloved idea from comics that people were excited to see, and peed on it. It's the same idea as what the problem was with Thor one. But worse. It's kind of the opposite end. You have this end where it's going too far this way, and then you have that one which is too far this way. Taika Waititi phoned it in. The writing's awful. Korg is a face. <laughs> and it's just, I think it's a bad movie. His all name around. is Dwayne. He's had a rocks. They made a baby together. That was easily a highlight of the movie. <laughs> yeah. I think it's easily F tier. I think Captain Marvel was easily more watchable than Thor: Love and Thunder. I had a lot. I don't think so. I've had. More I would rather fun. sit through watching Sam Jackson. I, I had more fun watching Thor: Love and Thunder. I'm sorry. Actually, the beginning sequence is more fun. Yeah, that that's, alone. That's that's what I was. The goats was annoying. Really? I liked the goats. I, I thought that's the goats a were ten hilarious. year old meme. I thought the goats were hilarious. It is so out of date. If it was made in 2016, Why, one that would brain fit. cell. Screaming goats are funny to me, just like yeah, farts. They're funny farts are in funny. reality, but like when you put it in a movie, it's like that's no different than jokes in the Emoji Movie or Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet. Wow, you I've know, never seen the Emoji Movie. Honestly, we need to go. We or need to Ralph go back and watch, rewatch our reviews because I remember you laughing your ass off about the goats. It's one of those things, funny in moment, and then you sit and think about it, and it's like, hey, wait a second. I remember when this was new. Honestly, a lot of the when newer I was movies, in third grade. I remember us saying, oh, yeah, it was really good. And then We did like Thor shit. in our review. We, li- we liked Thor in our review. We liked Quantumania in our review. We this is what happens when you sit and dwell. I know. Well, but I I'm think Quantumania is going to go pretty, like, B. We'll it, get there. Easily C. Hi, All right, I She-Hulk. See low B. She-Hulk is... D. I'm not going to call it an F. I liked it more than Eternals. It's not saying much. Yeah. I, I liked it l- more than Black Widow and Captain Marvel. Lady. I don't know if I liked it more than Captain Marvel. You think it's Lady. that low? I like She-Hulk as a character Lady. more than Captain Marvel. Because I was thinking I, I was going to stop on the ladder. Well, well if I rewatch She-Hulk, I at least get regular Hulk and Daredevil. I guess. Low D. Low D. Low D. I was Lady. thinking it was, it was going to beat out F and then not beat out Iron Man 3. That's accurate. Werewolf by Night. I know where you want to put this. It's an homage to old movies. It also introduces Werewolf by Night and Man-Thing. I thought you said said A. I did. say A. I think it does a lot. I think... And the first directorial (laughs) debut. Well, duh. (coughs) It's amazing. I would put it in A. I think it does a lot, and it's worth a lot. And the music is wonderful. Wakanda Forever. C. (sighs) Yeah. Like low, the lowest. One of those C. things, like watching it, it's like, yeah, this is nice. Dwelling on it, it's like, wait a minute. I didn't even, watching it. I I didn't even think. Well, this is nice. I was like, well, Namor's cool. The rest Namor of this movie was, was kind of trash. Of the movie. 
that's what I expected, though. Yeah. I got what I expected. I mean, I, I was, we've said it on the podcast before. We all agree that this should have just recasted. Yeah, as bad as it sounds. We, we all love Chadwick Boseman. As you can see, Black Panther 1, we loved it. It's Civil just, War. Civil War. He's a great actor. We understand why. He was in a we star in Infinity War don't. and Endgame as well. I don't think with the with the lead that they chose in Black Panther 2, it just I don't think it, it, did, it didn't, it didn't work as well. It suffers from real world issues. We we talked about it on the Guardians of the Galaxy episode. We, we know how we feel. The Guardians holiday special. One of the best holiday specials, I think, ever. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Chief. <laughs> I liked it. It was fun to watch. I thought it was very silly. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. That was very I, Kevin I wouldn't Bacon put it was part of the reason why I really want to put it in C. Better than Miss Marvel though? No. I was easily more in tune to watching Miss Marvel. The music is the highlight of, yeah. of the Guardians holiday special. Because they volume. made two new songs. Yeah. And introduced me to way more Christmas songs I've never even heard. Quantum Mania. I Quantumania? think B. I think easily Lo- high C, low B. Uh, low B. I was thinking Because the B. story was good. The idea. The was idea good. was good. What happened in the movie, do you love someone her? pooped on it somewhere in the, the middle. of her? I think S. 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 Wait, or are we saying that because it's new and we like it? Or are we saying, I think. No, I. Or maybe even. It's but a like, well look made at it movie. like. It's well made, but we put, we did it to Shang Chi. This is the true self examination. We did it to Shang Chi for the same reason. It's it's a great movie, but did it? I don't think it has had an impact as much as these first top three. It's not gonna. Well, that's not the thing. Yet. It's hard to say so far. So because, far, so I'd say it's easily a high A. I like it more than so much of the MCU. I grew up stronger with the Guardians being like the first things I saw in the theater. The first one I was truly excited to see, other than like Captain America. It's hard. Know. It's hard to say with Guardians three and would what you put it means for the rest of the universe. Would you put it above Infinity War? I would personally. I don't know if I would personally. I think it's a better made movie because I also didn't know it was going to happen because it's not based on a comic book story. True. Infinity War is based on a comic book story, and I was really frustrated watching Spider Man die in a really stupid, drawn out, five minute clip. Yeah, I would not put it above Endgame though. I don't think personally, personally in my own feelings I would but I couldn't I could not Have you dwelled on it long enough? I don't know, but I know it's a better made movie. It's a comic book movie to the fullest extent that it could be. It takes serious where it needs to be serious and it's goofy out of that what's genuinely goofy. But like we got to look like at a it talking like talking Russian dog in the middle of deep space. Like Sung Chi, the reason we didn't put it in S and we don't know about Guardians is too new. It's I just like it doesn't have it so far. I don't feel like it's gonna have as big of an impact. So it's far. going to have a bigger one than Guardians two. Yeah, but Guardians three. I think it's going to have an impact that makes the other movies look sad. If that makes sense. Our next movie is the Marvels, which we all have low it's hopes ar- for. Right, and I feel bad for everybody involved in that because it's coming out as a losing game. They weren't able to recuperate the people the way that they needed to. It made enough money with the first one to warrant the sequel. And you had these cool scenes where you see her doing superpower things. But when you're going to compare that to Guardians of the Galaxy 3, it's going to go downhill. Yeah. This is a height of the MCU and the lowest point of the MCU at this moment. Yep. It's hard to say how I'll feel about this movie going forward, but I know I still get emotional watching Yondu die. And Rocket Raccoon I actually give a crap about. Mm -hmm. I cried a second time watching the movie which is more than just tearing up at Yondu. I think Guardians 3 is going to stand out longer. It's a well-made movie. It uses practical effects and even enhances some of those practical effects with the CGI. Which is how CGI should be used. That's how it should be done. It's a master class of how a superhero movie should be at this kind of basic level. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah. That is our tier list. Um... The ones that were in F, I expected to be in F. Yeah. Yep. Actually, I expected more in F. Well, it may be in your tier list. Oh, there yeah. would be. There would be. But this is our tier list. 
it was a debated tier list. And I, I'm happy with this tier list. Okay. I think. I am too. Do we have anything that we have a true argument with within our own thoughts Not of like something we set ourselves? Because a lot of this it does change after you sit and think about it, <coughs> which is a big thing with really any movie. But like, really, th- I think Thor: Love and Thunder is a big symbol of that to me. I remember sitting there laughing and enjoying it, and then I sat down and was like, "What?" I mean, well, Multiverse of Madness. When we came home, we were like, "Oh my god, that was amazing!" Perfect. Example. That was the amazing movie. We loved it. Everything that we wanted to happen. B. Now it's in everything that we wanted to have happened happened. It was amazing, and now look where it lies. I got what I. Expected but you go out back. I I these movies up here in S are movies that and even A are movies and shows that I would go back to and enjoy every single time. Right. I do that with movies in tier B. True. Like Captain like, America one. All the, I rewatch yeah, that Captain movie Americas. so often. I have Logan's sick of it, I think. I think Avengers Avengers Age of Ultron, in my opinion, would be higher would be up in S. I think all the Avengers movies would be up in S. All four of them. And on my personal tier list. Yeah. I don't know. I think Infinity War has a stronger writing than Endgame, but I think Endgame is a much more emotionally impactful movie that does things that is truly different and unexpected. When you break it down, I knew that they were coming back. I knew who was dying because who are you going to kill? The original Avengers? No, they're the ones that you built this movies on. They killed Black Widow. They did. It's Black Widow. No one cares about Black Widow until the Black until she died. No one give a shat about Black Widow. Anybody that says died. that Black Widow is their favorite character is lying. It is well, I shouldn't say lying. But it's definitely built out of that feeling of, oh my gosh, she's gone. What am I gonna do? I never expected her to be gone. It's like Daphne from Scooby. She's like, she's like. If you eliminate Daphne from Scooby Doo, people I, I don't know, freak I don't out. Know I I don't know what it is, what the thing is called, but it's like you're comfortable with the thing being there. But once it's gone, but once you it's freak gone, out. you freak out. It's six thirty now. Yeah, what? We're we're, we're gonna call it down good. The, we'll call it good. I think we're that's our, our thoughts are full. That's our show. That's our. That's our tier list, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in for this episode of the podcast. If you're still here, yeah, we love you. Congratulations. Thank um, you. Let us know what your opinions would differ from ours down yeah. in the comments below. Uh, Wyatt, what's your word? Uh, it's just going to be MCU. All right. It's Go down in the hard. comments and type MCU. Wyatt will give you a gold star. And a pat on the back. Yeah, I'll give you a and little a pat tickle. on the butt. Mm-hmm. A tickle on the butt? A little, nah, I don't know about that part. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Where else would you take? Make sure to leave a like if you liked. Make sure to subscribe. (laughs) Share with your friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.